How could they guess this so accurately? See the government document for yourself. Hello everyone, this is Ty Green. I was researching on a topic totally unrelated to what I'm about to show you. I thought it was very interesting, so I wanted to share this with all of you. You can draw your own conclusions and read the full document for yourselves. The links to the government pages are on the screen during portions of this video, and it will be in the description box for this video. I'm going to be very careful of what I say due to the subject matter. Here goes. You've seen the thumbnail for this video. They knew since 2008. Note, I did not add a question mark. See, we can have BG on stage at a TED talk talking about this very topic, then it happens. We can have the event 201 exercise, which was held on Friday, October 18th of 2019 in New York City. And weeks later, it was the real deal. What I found here within this study from the National Intelligence Council is even more interesting in my opinion. Global Trends 2025, a transformed world. This is real, folks. Look at the year in which this was published, 2008. The PDF file was downloaded from their site and is public information. I verified this and have it for you to see in the upper right hand side of the screen. Look, November of 2008. Let's look at this on the first page and then we're going straight to that page I want you to see. And when you see it, I'm going to leave it up on the screen. Let's get into this. It starts off like this. We prepared Global Trends 2025, a transformed world to stimulate strategic thinking about the future by identifying key trends, the factors that drive them, where they seem to be headed and how they might interact. It uses scenarios to illustrate some of the many ways in which the drivers examined in the study, e.g. globalization, demography, the rise of new powers, the decay of international institutions, climate change, and the geopolitics of energy may interact to generate challenges and opportunities for future decision makers. The study as a whole is more a description of the factors likely to shape events than a prediction of what will actually happen. Now, look at all of the folks that contributed to the study. Really bright people, too. So much so that they could see bricks coming way back in 2008. We know the term was coined in 2001 by Goldman Sachs economist Jim O'Neill. BRICS didn't have their first summit until 2009, but in this study, they look at a global scenario. BRICS bust up. And this is before South Africa joined up. They also look into another possible use of nuclear weapons, which I've shared on before that the Bible talks about. Lots of interesting stuff in here, but let's get to it. Look at page 75. Tell me what you think of this in the comments section. Potential emergence of a global pandemic. The emergence of a novel, highly transmissible and virulent human respiratory illness for which there are no adequate countermeasures could initiate a global pandemic. If a pandemic disease emerges by 2025, internal and cross-border tension and conflict will become more likely as nations struggle with degrading capabilities to control the movement of populations seeking to avoid infection or maintain access to resources. The emergence of a pandemic disease depends on the natural genetic mutation or reassortment of currently circulating disease strains or the emergence of a new pathogen into the human population. Experts consider highly pathogenic avian influenza strains such as H5N1 to be likely candidates for such a transformation, but other pathogens such as the SARS coronavirus or other influenza strains also have this potential. 
out of any type of disease that could be involved in a global pandemic, the experts thought it would be something like a coronavirus. Indeed, it was. And they thought about this way back in 2008. Not only that, but they guessed the area of the world that it would supposedly come from. If a pandemic disease emerges, it probably will first occur in an area marked by high population density and close association between humans and animals, such as many areas of China and Southeast Asia, where human populations live in close proximity to livestock. Hmm. They knew it would most likely come from China way back in 2008. Unregulated animal husbandry practices could allow a zoonotic disease such as H5N1 to circulate in livestock populations, increasing the opportunity for mutation into a strain with pandemic potential. To propagate effectively, a disease would have to be transmitted to areas of higher population density. Under such a scenario, inadequate health monitoring capability within the nation of origin probably would prevent early identification of the disease. Interesting, isn't it? Slow public health response would delay the realization that a highly transmissible pathogen had emerged. Weeks might pass before definitive laboratory results could be obtained, confirming the existence of a disease with pandemic potential. Now, I personally know people here in the U.S. that were sick in October and November of 2019, and doctors didn't know what it was at the time. In the interim, clusters of the disease would begin to appear in towns and cities within Southeast Asia. Despite limits imposed on international travel, travelers with mild symptoms or who were asymptomatic could carry the disease to other continents. Did we not see this? Waves of new cases would occur every few months. Aren't we still seeing this? The absence of an effective vaccine and near universal lack of immunity would render populations vulnerable to infection. In this worst case, tens to hundreds of millions of Americans within the U.S. homeland would become ill and deaths would mount into the tens of millions. Outside the U.S., critical infrastructure degradation and economic loss on a global scale would result as approximately a third of the worldwide population became ill and hundreds of millions died. We know that it did not get to that worst case scenario. Here are the present global stats. In the last seven days, globally, 2,751 new cases. That's it, all over the world, total, last seven days. Cumulative cases, this is from the very start up until now, 770,875,400 globally of this pandemic. There are 6,959,316 deaths, total cumulative deaths. The scary party is we're still being told that a more devastating variant is coming. This is from the experts. They say it is inevitable. They said that they know it's coming. Even within this particular study by the National Intelligence Council, which expects the same by 2025, hence the funding and preparedness efforts. But what do you think? Do you think that from this study that they knew back in 2008 would actually happened in 2019? And from what they expected, it fell short. Is it done now or is a worse variant coming? I got to say this, just because you know that something is coming doesn't mean that you are involved in bringing it about. Right. Sometimes an educated guess becomes factual 
to one who has seen enough research and data that points to a specific detail. From that perspective, I do think that they did know back in 08, if you can call it knowing. Doesn't mean that they were involved in anything nefarious to be able to see where the data leads, yet it does serve as an opportunity for a nefarious act to take place and help things along. You see, you all know my opinion on this. The Lord says pestilences in Matthew chapter 24, verse 7. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. So I do expect another event. Just don't know when. Could be before the Harpazo or it could be afterwards. But don't be afraid of such things. See, trust in the Lord. Get saved if you're not already. Ensure that the salvation of your soul is in Christ Jesus alone, because tomorrow is not promised to any of us. Today is the day of salvation. You can be prepared to meet God right now. You must believe in your heart that Jesus died for you on that cross. For we have all sinned and all fall short of the glory of God. For we all have a sin debt that we cannot pay. The wages of sin is death, right? So we must trust in what Jesus did for us upon that cross. We must believe it with our hearts and confess it with our mouths. Jesus was buried and on the third day, God raised him up. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So just come as you are. Look at this. Titus 3, verses 3 through 7. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving diverse lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But after that, the kindness and love of God, our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. All right, I will leave it right there. We must use our remaining time wisely. Amen. Live holy before the Lord. Love y'all. Shalom.